Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this cookbook from 1883, The Housekeeper's New Cookbook. Um, this cookbook is compiled from recipes that live in and around Ohio, in and around where the, the compiler lived. Some of the recipes have a name associated with them underneath. Um, she has compiled recipes from all over the place and there's a, there's a preface that starts like so many of the prefaces of cookbooks from this era. Why do you need another cookbook? There's so many cookbooks on the, on the market. Why would you need another one? Well, you need this one because this is the one that's going to give you what you need to know in the kitchen. Um, and you know what? It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it is a pretty good cookbook. Lots of good recipes in here. Um, lots of good information for running a household, things that you should have in your kitchen. Um, very, uh, very good ideas about meal planning. A lot of times when I look in these books, the meal planning is so over the top um, that you're, you're never going to get there. You're never going to do it. You're going to look at it and go, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. And you do something much plainer, or at least I would. And I, I see that in this book, they've gone for a much more plain approach, uh, which I really like. Speaking of plain, um, we're going to make fried cabbage today. Now, um, a couple of things. I've cut the recipe down because I don't need to fry an entire head of cabbage uh, for just Julie and I. And, you know, how big is a head of cabbage? No one really knows. So I've taken that amount of cabbage. It also calls for one cup of bacon grease. Um, that's a lot of bacon grease. Even as, you know, I'm someone who, who saves bacon grease. I'm down to the bottom of my jar. I haven't been home for a few weeks, uh, been traveling, and so I'm almost out. And people ask me about the bacon grease, and it really is every time I fry some bacon, I save the grease. I think that's as much as I can scrape out. Now, this recipe really isn't much of a recipe. It is a list of ingredients, and then it says fry in a skillet, stirring occasionally until brown. There are a couple of things. It says one or half a pint of boiling water. And since we're frying everything, I'm not really sure about what the water's there for. It might just be there to start the steaming action on the cabbage to cook the cabbage through before you get the browning or frying on the outside. I guess we're gonna find out. So in goes the cabbage, shredded into our skillet. That's a funny word for me. Red pepper, and I've got some questions about the red pepper, but we'll get to that. Salt, sugar, and baking soda. The recipe asked for red pepper, and I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it meant a hot pepper or just a red sweet bell pepper. I just used red sweet bell pepper. I think a hot pepper would go really well in this. Um, you know, my go-to of a jalapeno would would uh, would really make this dish for me. Even uh, pickled jalapeno, I think, would go really well in this because the bright acidity of, of the vinegar that it's pickled in would work really well. In goes a little bit of the water. I'm going to turn the heat up a touch, get that up to a boil, and we'll see what happens. I've also got a lid. doesn't say anything about a lid. The lid isn't actually for this pan, but I think I might put a lid on it for a little while. We'll just see how it goes first. Let's give it a chance. I can hear you. What's with the baking soda? Um, most of us associate baking soda with uh, baked goods causing a chem chemical reaction, releasing CO2, and causing a rise in the, in the baked good. Um, it also plays a couple of other roles when used in different ways. It will improve or uh, not improve, improve the browning of a lot of, a lot of baked goods. Uh, that, that baking soda will, will cause it to brown a little bit stronger and brown a little bit faster. In this instance, um, it will cause a little bit of browning of the cabbage, but it also causes the cabbage to completely disintegrate, right? So as you can see here, the cabbage is pretty much completely disintegrated. 
It's, it's along the lines of um, people are always very quick to say, oh, if you put a little bit of baking soda in your onions when you're trying to brown onions or caramelize onions, they'll brown faster. Yes, they will brown faster, but they turn to mush. They completely lose their shape and turn to mush, which is why I never do that, because I kind of like them to keep their shape. I've never had this before, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what it tastes like. Hey, hey Jules. Hey friends. I got a little sidetrack trying to look at what you cooked. Don't, 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 don't look at that um, on the back counter. That's, well, that's and not... I can smell what's going on in the back counter because that's clearly the cinnamon. Yep. I'm hoping this is cinnamon. No, this is not cinnamon. <laughs> no? No. I kind of had a gut feeling about that based on the onion bits. You know, I can identify. Oh, it smells like cabbage. Yeah. Tastes like cabbage. Get the bacon coming through from the bacon fat. Okay, it's the bacon. Yeah. Like, hold on, there's something else in there. Yeah. Um, the baking soda has completely turned the cabbage to mush. There's only little bits where you could say, oh, that you can get the texture of the cabbage. You're not convinced. Well, okay. I'm just trying to go through, because I didn't cook it, right? So I'm wondering yeah. how you, the baking soda, where the baking soda fit into the story. You don't think there's a baking soda flavor to it? It does have that overarching sort of, it has a, okay, so this is going to sound weird. I'm ready. Background, flavor, back of your mouth, pretzel. Yeah, which is the baking soda. Which is the baking soda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The baking soda and the salt, back of your mouth, pretzel flavor. The, the soda is there to improve browning and turn it to mush. Okay, but does it turn, turn to mush out? might be a, a secondary okay, effect. But, but, but the onion didn't. Like, what There's did no get? onion. So is that leftover cabbage? Yes, yeah, just a little bit. Oh, I thought cabbage. it was onion. There no. you go. I couldn't figure out where the flavor went. No. Because visually it was little chunks of onion in. No. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Just I'm cabbage. all wrong. What do I know? Mm. It needs something more. Um, well, I'm wondering, okay, so it tastes okay. But I'm wondering what it goes with. Am I supposed to put it on something? Is it a side dish? What, what's its... I think it's a side dish. Uh, you're not convinced. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm... convinced it's a side dish. I can see it on something or with something. Like I can see it on um, some kind of... Like on ham? Like a ham with... Yeah, maybe. On top if of it a or, little bit of... Yeah. You know what I mean? But not... With uh, apple. Apple would be good in it. A, a little no, bit. Of, there's something else. Um, a little bit of black pepper. Could use some paprika. Would make it. I think would would really bring the flavor around. And it, and and one of the things is in this time period. This is 1883. Let me make sure that I've got the time, the date right. 1883. So by 1883, companies like Watkins. Um, and there was a myriad of them at that point. They were mail order companies that sold spices. Yes. Spices would be very easy for anybody who had this book to get their hands on and relatively inexpensive. You ordered it, it came by mail. Um, all of that stuff was there, and yet it's not present in the book. Okay, so I mean, it's a maybe. I'm glad I only did a little bit of the cabbage. Me too. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.